off the truck. Well, Harris Rebar is one of the largest reinforcing steel companies in North America. We deal with the actual installation of the reinforcing steel that most of you don't see gets covered up with concrete, but it's an integral part of the construction industry. But right now, we have about uh, 300 employees in the BC division. And a lot of those employees are uh, young and new workers that uh, we had to bring online because of the simple fact that uh, with the amount of volume of work that is available right now to us, we just don't have the manpower to uh, respond to that. Our staff is old, they're middle-aged, they're going to retire soon, and if we don't start training people right away and getting them out there in our industry, we're not going to have anybody here to do this industry. We would have a list of students, probably 10 or 12, we would bring into our facility here in Richmond in a classroom environment, and we have uh, instructors that are happily actually have been in the industry for over 30 years that could actually sit and not only mentor with them but to teach them exactly how we did our job. We broke it up a little bit, a couple of hours of theory in, in the uh, classroom itself and then we would supplement that with some in, in the field training actually on our site. In the yard it gives us a little bit of advantage because we have a little more control. We don't have uh, the other trades to deal with and especially for a new worker that's the distractions of being out on a job right off the bat are sometimes, you know, a little overwhelming. So we get a chance to watch them, bring them in a little more slowly, and it's a little safer for everybody. The three-week orientation, the curriculum that we put together, uh, one of the most important aspects was safety. Uh, we are ironworkers, of course, we work at heights, uh, we work in buildings that are not fully constructed, and we wanted to make sure that the students knew everything there was in this particular job. First aid training was important, uh, women's training was important, and of course fall protection was extremely important. There's different types of gears out there. We wanted to make sure that the students knew how to use the gear and it became second nature to them and that they did wear it at all times. Well, we put a bright colored hard hat, a lime green in our case, on the, the first, uh, first year workers to, to identify them. The guys take an extra look to make sure they're, they're being safe and if they're going somewhere where they shouldn't, we can see, okay, that he doesn't know what he's, you know, he might not know, may not know what he's doing, so we can go over and make sure, check on him. Well, after the three-week process, um, we have five field superintendents that are uh, in charge of a geographical area in uh, BC. And what they'll do is they'll come in and they will handpick some students on specific jobs, and they will take them and introduce them to the foreman on the site, as well as the safety staff on that particular site, and uh, sort of put them under their wing of the foreman. And on, on every site you'll have an orientation, a safety orientation as well. And you'll also have toolbox meetings um, every week. So you'll get safety of what's going on on the site or if a certain kind of work's being done, you'll be warned of it or what to stay you know, clear of. And the foreman for the next 90 days will watch him carefully, document any changes, any issues that he's had with him and uh, actually let him experience more uh, in the actual element of work that we do on site as opposed to the prefab and we do here. It's almost the same situation there except now they're exposed to other trades and they're play they're placed with another journeyman. They work hand in hand with him, you know, and he's he just takes over from, from where we leave off. You definitely want him around. Like sometimes if you're kind of in the middle of a job and you're doing something and there's not a journeyman around and you don't know what to do next, you kind of want that, you know, journeyman around you just to find out what to do next or what you should do or if you should do that. We give the students uh, some documentation in regards to the industry. Uh, we also follow that up with uh, daily logs from our foreman to evaluate the students, as well as the students are required to report in to the union hall as well and uh, report what they worked on, what they've done, and, uh, and, the doc and the union hall will document that as well and keep track of them in the record in that 90-day period. Simply putting a body out there to hope that he does the work is not the answer. The answer is training, the answer is instruction, the answer is mentoring, and uh, we found that once we had a person that basically knew the basics of our business, that in turn he became a competitive worker and he enjoyed working because he knew what he was doing. He enjoyed the trade. I'd be a bit more scared if I was uh, to go without the train. I find the train gives you a bigger step and a bigger chance to uh, you know, survive on the job site. All right. These guys, when they go out, they already know how to tie. They already know how to hook off properly on a wall. They already know how to tie their lanyards off. So you can actually use them as, as you know, alongside a journeyman tradesman. You can use them and you can get a lot more work out of them. It makes it a lot easier for everybody.